Hi everyone, my name is Laura Griffin and today I will be discussing my work on the artificial selection of behavioural traits in human-wildlife feeding interactions. Human-wildlife feeding interactions have become increasingly commonplace as a self-led recreational activity for people. In particular, species resident in parklands, gardens and urban areas have become regularly targeted for these interactions. However, whether wild individuals' engagement is random or opportunistic, or whether there is repeatable behavioural differences in engagement among individuals who have equal opportunity to interact, remains unknown. Additionally, if members of a population naturally vary in their engagement with these interactions, driven by individual behaviour, meaning that there are dietary variances, what are the repercussions for fitness? We use the resident fallow deer herd in Phoenix Park, Dublin as our study population to explore whether engagement in these interactions is indeed random or driven by individual behaviour. Wild cervids are a popular target for these interactions and this population itself has gotten a lot of media coverage due to the volume of visitors attempting to feed them. Since female fallow deer's entire life cycle circulates around the production of offspring, we decided to see whether any behavioural variation found in turn impacted the birth weight of their fawns. We followed 458 ear-tagged individuals from early May to August over two years. Over this time, we collected behavioural observations on group structure, interaction availability, and whether or not the individual engaged. We then made a generalised linear mixed effects model with whether the individual interacted or begged as the response and with the individual's ID as a random effect. We then extracted the random intercept as likelihood to interact, and we also tested these behaviours for repeatability. Simultaneously, in June of each year, we captured, tagged and weighed newborn fawns. We then performed behavioural observations to pair these offspring with their mothers by tracking repeat observations of mother behaviours, such as suckling or grooming. In total, we paired 94 mothers with 134 fawns over three years. We then built a linear mixed effect model using fawn birth weight as the response to determine if mother begging behavior had an effect. Okay, so for our model on begging behavior, here we have plotted the random intercept on the x-axis with the order forming a ranking system, which we have put on the y-axis. As you can see, we found that an individual's likelihood to beg fell on a scale with some individuals being extremely likely to engage with people for food and others not really engaging at all. This behaviour was highly repeatable among individuals over the two years, showing that it is consistent at the individual level. That means that some individuals in this population are ingesting a natural diet of forage and graze. However, others' diets are heavily supplemented with human foods. We tracked these in our behavioural observations, and these, this food primarily consists of bread, carrots, apples, and oats. In terms of fawn birth weight, you can see here that we have plotted the random intercept of the mothers on the x-axis and the fawn birth weight on the y-axis. We found that females who begged more produced significantly heavier fawns, with an approximate 68 gram increase in fawn birth weight per increase in rank of the mother. Overall, our results show clearly for the first time that consistent engagement with these human wildlife feeding interactions is not simply opportunistic, but instead is driven by the individual's behaviour. Additionally, those females that consistently approach and accept from humans are producing significantly heavier fawns than those who do not. This indicates that these females who accept food from humans may be gaining an unfair advantage when it comes to reproductive success as the excess nutrition they extract from these additional food items allows them to invest more heavily in a neutral fawn development. In general, those offspring that are heavier tend to have a survival advantage in wild populations. Therefore, it appears that these human wildlife interactions are resulting in artificial selection, with better reproductive success for those females to display this behavioral trait. As artificial selection of behavioural traits in wild populations ought to be avoided at all costs, the implications of these findings lead us to call for better management of these interactions in parks and better educational programmes to prevent their occurrence in human-dominated areas. I'd like to take this opportunity to thank my funding bodies, co-authors and field assistants, and also to thank you for listening.